The crazy thing is that this perk isn't even on some annual fee cards like the American Express Gold. The fact that it's on two cards that technically don't have an annual fee is pretty awesome. What's up guys, it's Sebastian from Ask Sebi Business, and today we're going to look at the American Express Amazon and Amazon Prime cards. As typical for this channel, we'll look at the cards using three different levels. Number one is the base rate. Number two is how to decide between each card, especially if you maybe don't care about Amazon Prime. And number three is some other options to consider and even some game theory. So even if the cards make sense and sound good, there might be a reason why you want to avoid them. Big favor before we dive in is to give us a thumbs up. And if you are someone new here, and you want to maximize your cash back or maybe do a cool trip or two, then consider subscribing. With the regular Amazon business card, you're earning 3% back at select US purchases at Amazon Business, AWS, Amazon.com, as well as Whole Foods Market. In case you don't know what AWS is, it stands for Amazon Web Services, so pretty much the platform that manages a lot of applications. Also how some people end up making a few hundred thousand dollars a year in cash back from their spend. So this means that you're getting 3% back, whether you're spending a lot on AWS or you're going to Whole Foods and buying carrots. One of the major disadvantages is that you are capped off at $120,000 in purchases per calendar year for that 3%, after that, it's 1%. If you're someone that doesn't care about the cash back you get, and especially if you don't want to or can't get the plum card, then this might be worth considering as well. Instead of 3%, you can choose to have 60-day terms for these purchases. This means that your business has a lot more time to pay this off, and especially if you are more inventory-based, it can be extremely helpful. In addition to this, you're going to get 2% back for US purchases at restaurants, gas stations, and also wireless phone services. 1% back on everything else is pretty standard. So normally on the personal side, 2% is kind of table stakes. It's kind of the baseline that you get for everything else but on the business side i'd argue that that's typically not the case it's closer to 1.5 so two percent is pretty good probably not game changing but it's enough as you'd expect you can kind of think about the amazon prime card like a super sane version of the card we just talked about so the two percent and one percent categories are exactly the same the main difference is going to be the three percent in 60 days with the prime card they're replacing it with five percent in up to 90 day terms 90 days is pretty crazy because that's a fiscal quarter. And again, it does depend on the type of business you run. I know a lot of people who do more software stuff are kind of confused why you would care about this, but with inventory, because you do have turnover, you have cost of goods sold, it does take you more time. So imagine a corner store or a small convenience store buying a bunch of snacks or something and then having to sell that stuff. Alternatively, if you're an Etsy store and you need material to make things and you're buying them from Amazon, then this might be a pretty good choice. In a lot of ways, the 90 days does feel pretty industry leading, even if it is for a small subsect of your purchases, specifically within the Amazon umbrella. The next best bet is probably the American Express Plum card, which gets you 60 days. So definitely not for everyone, but I think there is a pretty good use case. Main takeaway is that the cards by themselves on the base level are pretty solid. I love the multipliers, the optionality that you have with the pay cycles, and the fact that they're technically no annual fee. On that note, if you do want to learn about cards and you want to support the channel, we do have links on the website and also down below in the description box. Make sure the links are competitive, but otherwise it's a huge way to support the channel. So thank you guys in advance. All right, so even though both cards technically don't have an annual fee, some people will argue that one does because you need to have Prime. And if you don't like Prime, if you don't already have Prime, then there is that fee associated. So the big question for this section is how much money would you need to spend at Amazon or the affiliated companies in order to just pay for Prime, even if you value the other perks at zero? As of filming, the price of Prime is going to be $14.99 per month or $139 per year. This means that if we do the math and carry the one, you need to spend $6,950 in order to break even. If you spend more than that in a calendar year, so let's say $7,000, then even if you hate Prime, then you still get benefit, you're coming out ahead. If you spend less than that and just get the normal variation and then upgrade if you do eventually get prime. Also, I'm pretty sure there are some people out there who'd happily pay 139 per year to get 90 days instead of 60 days as a payment terms. Note that even if you have prime right now and you sign up for the prime card, if you get rid of prime, then most times they're going to downgrade you to the non-prime version. So there's not really any tricks there. On a similar note, if you upgrade to prime, then generally you can upgrade to that card. Well, there has to be some differences in benefits, right? Because one technically kind of has a fee. I'm glad you asked Paper Towel Sebi, and it doesn't seem to be the case. There seems to be quite a bit of overlap. So for both the cards, you have no foreign transaction fees. Not the biggest deal, but a lot of no annual fee cards do have a foreign transaction fee, so this is nice. If you're someone that travels, both of them also have baggage insurance. Same thing with car rentals, both have secondary CDW. Also same for purchases, both have the same extended warranty and purchase protection coverage. Be careful with this one because not all things are covered. So if you buy a goldfish or something and it doesn't last, then that's not covered because that's a living animal. Same thing with plants and there's a giant list of exclusions. I'm just warning you because sometimes I think people get surprised that an animal doesn't count. 
Interestingly enough, both cards also have one of American Express's best benefits in return protection. There's a ton of rules here as well, but if you buy something for $300 or less and you can't return it within 90 days, then you can pretty much return it to them. It can be more than 300, but then you're capped off at 300. So you might be sending in an item that's worth, let's say 600 to them. And that's generally not worth it. As you'd expect, you see this on the platinum cards and other high annual fee ones. Interestingly enough, it's also on cards like the Amazon and Amazon Prime. And they're sitting between a mid annual fee card and a pretty high annual fee one. The crazy thing is that this perk isn't even on some annual fee cards like the gold card. Main takeaway from this section is that the perks and the benefits for the cards, I would say kind of punch above the weight class and are pretty solid. If you're someone that wants premium American Express benefits and you don't want to pay an annual fee, then this might be your means of getting those. In terms of if you should get the prime or non-prime card, just depends on if you have it. And if you don't, it might make sense to pay for it if you spend enough. And for us, based off that calculation, that's $6,950 as a break-even point, more than that equals good. Or if you just want the 90 days, because that makes sense as well. Okay, so moving to level three, let's compare it to some other cards and why you might still want to avoid these ones given the opportunity cost. The most obvious alternatives are going to be the Chase Amazon and Chase Amazon Prime cards. 2% ones are pretty much the same, except for swap out wireless phone services with drug stores. I guess you could argue that on the personal end, 2% doesn't really move the needle, while on the business end it does. The 3 and 5% ones are pretty much the same, so it lists Amazon.com as well as Whole Foods. Even though it's not listed, things like AWS have historically worked. If you do a Google search and look through data points through a ton of different forums, you're going to see thousands of data points saying that it does work. Unless Amazon decides to change this in the future, which I hope they don't. Okay, so what's the case for either side? On American Express's end, you win with the better perks, so the better insurances and stuff that we just covered, and also 60 or 90 days. On Chase's end, and it's a pretty strong one, is that it's not capped. So same, no annual credit card fee, no foreign transaction fee, and no earnings cap. The big question you need to ask yourself is how much money you plan to spend through these Amazon services. If you're someone that runs a software business, then you might be spending a ton through AWS, and that can actually add up pretty fast. I know a few YC and venture back founders who probably spend something like 5000 to upwards of $100,000 per month. And this isn't for fun, right? This is to pay for their platform and services to actually work. So they're paying money in order to make money. If that sounds confusing, you can kind of think of it like digital rent. So you're paying for those utilities for everything to work. Especially for e-commerce, you kind of have a lot of people because it's not just your users, it's your users' users. So for example, using a pretty outlandish edge case, let's say your business was spending a quarter of a million every month through AWS. 250K times 5%, that's 12,500 per month in cash back. 12.5 times 12 months, that's $150,000 in cash back per year. So pretty much another person's salary as your cash back. And also this is not taxable because it's technically a rebate. And to be fair, this is not going to be everyone. But if you are spending that level of money on specific categories, then you might as well optimize it. If you're someone running a business or you work at a business, then you're kind of spending money to make money anyways. Main takeaway for this part, if you're spending more than $120,000 per year with Amazon services, then the chase side is a lot better. Okay, last part of it outside of the spend based stuff, there is an argument to kind of avoid the American Express side because there is an opportunity cost. Of American Express, you're generally capped at four, five, or six credit cards. So these are the ones that have credit limits like the Amazon ones. In contrast, hybrid cards like the gold and platinum have a different cap of 10. So even though the Amazon and Amazon Prime cards are pretty solid, they might be taking up a slot that could be filled with a Hilton Aspire or a second or third Hilton Aspire or something like a Bonvoy Brilliant. Basically hotel keeper cards that can swing above their weight class because you don't have to spend too much on those to get value. Obviously a ton of exceptions and arguments and stuff that you can make, but do what makes sense for you, your mileage may vary. The main point of this channel and pretty much all my channels is just to give you additional information and insight to help you make that educated decision. On that note, if you do want to learn about cards, we have links on the website and also down below in the description box. If you made it to this point in the video, let's leave a carrot emoji in the comments down below and I'll try to heart it and also respond to the comment. My question for you is what are your thoughts on the Amazon and Amazon Prime cards? Would you consider getting them or do you feel the opportunity cost is too high? Or maybe you prefer the chase side? Let me know and everyone else know in the comments down below. Big favor, give us a thumbs up, consider sharing it to someone else, but otherwise, hope you guys liked it. See you guys next time.